13 easy Rocket League tips to instantly play faster. And if you don't know me, I'm uncoordinated, 21 years of age and not getting any younger and slower than when I was 15 years old and first picked up the controller. So the point is, if these still work for me today, they're gonna work for you too. Number one, power slide on all transitions. If you didn't know, holding power slide is the key to maintaining momentum when you land on the ground. But for you more intermediate or higher rank players watching, what you may not know is holding power slide when you transition onto the wall or ceiling is just as useful as when you're landing on the ground. So from now on, whenever you're landing from air to ground or going from ground to wall or even wall to ceiling, hold power slide and you're going to move quicker and maintain more speed everywhere you move around the field. Number two, wave dash kickoffs. No, I'm not talking about wave dashing on your way to the kickoff. I'm talking about wave dashing at the 50-50. The main use case for this is for advanced players in either 1v1 or 2v2. The reason jumping into the 50-50 and holding your dodge so that way you can wave dash instead of just flipping through the kickoff challenge is it allows you to become grounded quicker. I don't know if you know this, but using your second dodge actually momentarily suspends you midair. So if we have two players side by side and one is jumping and front flipping and the other is just jumping, you might think they'll land at the same time, but they actually won't. The person who saves their jump will land quicker, plus then you can wave dash onto the ground for a quicker recovery. Pro tip that I learned from watching Alpha Cap. Normally, you'd want to jump much quicker in order to win a kickoff, but since we're not using our second dodge and we're just trying to recover fast after, save your flip until the last second that you enter the final circle before the kickoff, and you will absolutely crush in 1v1. Number three, supersonic turns. I don't know if you know this, but once you're going supersonic in Rocket League, you actually don't need to do anything to maintain it. In other words, if you're driving in a straight line at supersonic and you keep driving straight, you'll maintain your speed. However, there's one catch to this, and that's if you turn. So if you're traveling supersonic and you need to turn, the most boost efficient way is to tap your turns instead of holding down. This will allow you to maintain supersonic while you turn and not have to use any boost to play faster. Number four, neutral jumps. The neutral jump or empty jump simply means using your second dodge without a direction. Now you may commonly do this when you're taking off for like a fast aerial, for example, but what you probably aren't doing, or at least aren't doing enough in your ranked games is using that second jump to move sideways or down. Yes, that's right. If you're jumping off of a wall, for example, and you turn your car upside down before you use your second empty jump, that jump is actually going to propel you down. If you haven't seen this before, this is how Pros recover super quickly on and off walls, on and off the ground, and even on and off the ceiling. Go into free play and practice jumping up to the ceiling and then using both jumps to jump down. Then when you get more comfortable with this, you can practice jumping off the wall and inverting your car to once again, neutral jump down to the ground and get grounded faster. Do this and your recoveries are going to be three times as fast as anyone below Grand Champ. Number five, wave dashing off and back onto walls. If you've seen any amount of my videos or other tutorial maker videos on Rocket League, you probably know by now that you should be wave dashing. Wave dashing might be the easiest recovery mechanic for new players to pull off. But what you might not be doing is using wave dashes, not just back onto the ground, like we talked about earlier, but also when getting onto the walls or even getting onto the ceiling. I was watching pro gameplay and a pro that shocked me when I saw him do this most is Appjack. If you ever watch an Appjack 1's game, pay attention to how he uses wave dashes, not just to get off the wall, but actually to jump onto walls. If you've never done this, practice going into free play jumping, then air rolling to expose your wheels to one of the sidewalls and use your wave dash to actually slam onto the wall and get a speed boost. 90% of people, even in Grand Champ, aren't catching up to this yet. So do this and you're going to be ahead of 90% of players for sure. Number six, pre-flips on to surfaces. One of the reasons pros are still getting faster to this day is many of them are learning how to pre-flip balls, that is dodge forward or dodge sideways, way before they actually connect 
with the ball. For the average player like you and me, that's probably a little above our level. But what you can start learning how to do is pre-flipping on and off surfaces. A semi-pro player named Mizu actually put me onto this while I was at the Spring Major in San Diego last year, where he explained to me that the reason pros are so fast near walls is not just wall dashing, but also because many of them have started to speed flip on and off the walls. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go into free play and drive next to the left wall. If you imagine a ball coming at you, what most players would do is simply drive to the left, climb up the wall, and then use the wall to hit it. But what Mizu explained, instead of just turning and driving up the wall like a normal player would, actually speed flip to the left to sort of pre-flip into the wall. This way, you get a speed boost from the dodge and you can still climb the wall and hit it like normal. Pre-flips like this onto the wall, onto the backboard, and once again, onto the ceiling are how SSLs are playing 10 times faster than even GC1s. Give this a shot in free play and you're gonna be surprised. Number seven, half flips versus quarter flips. Half flips are not like speed flips. A speed flip looks the same every time you do it. Even though there are technically two different ways you can speed flip that I'm not gonna get into here, a successful speed flip looks like this and an unsuccessful speed flip looks like that. There's a clear difference. However, half flips are not so black and white. If you didn't know, you can actually control your ending position on a half flip anywhere from 90 to 180 degrees. If you imagine your left analog stick is a clock. Most players think that the only way to half flip is by dodging down to six and canceling back up to 12. But the truth is you can actually shift your initial dodge off of true north. So say down to five, four, or even almost three on the clock before you cancel back up to turn your half flip into more of a quarter flip. This might seem like I'm picking boring details just to talk about for a YouTube video, which uh, admittedly, I mean, kind of am. But once you start to get above champ, this is like actually useful. If you're ever in a situation where like you have the wall right on your back and you don't really want to half flip fully, instead you want to half flip kind of more to the right or more to the left, this is a great way to do it. So go into free play, put the wall right to your back, say go into one of your corners, and then practice quarter flipping into the corner. So that way you land on your back wall and are immediately ready to go drive up the corner. This is just one example of why this is useful, but tactical stuff like this actually matters. <sighs> okay. We're halfway through the video and I'm sure you're exhausted from hearing me talk. So now I want to tell you something about these tips with most of these tips. You may have noticed that I'm telling you more like surface level stuff. Like I'm not really going into the details because when I talk about like tactics and situations like we talked about with the half flip and the quarter flip, it gets exhausting really quickly. It gets super specific. And I'm just going to be honest with you. People click off the video and it is what it is. I'm not mad about it. The reason I'm mentioning this is because most of these tips that are coming up are going to be very high level tips geared towards the average player. But if you're a more advanced player, like I'm talking specifically like diamond champ, even GC plus, and you want more in-depth stuff, you might want to know about our video sponsor, the Grand Champ Bootcamp. The Grand Champ Bootcamp is Rocket League's most comprehensive live 12-week group coaching program that specializes in taking gold through champ ranked players up to GC or even higher in just 12 weeks or less. This program is designed specifically for advanced players, which is why new students who enroll take a benchmark test immediately upon joining and get assigned a private coach that works with them one-on-one -on -one over the course of 12 weeks for a fully personalized improvement experience. So if you're sick of just tier lists and top 20 tips videos on YouTube, you might want to consider checking out the Grand Champ Bootcamp. You can DM the Grand Champ Bootcamp help account over on Discord with the keyword help to learn more about enrolling. I'll have that Discord first link in the description below. Otherwise, back to it. Number eight, flying from goal to goal. I'll be honest, I'm not a fan of using free play to train air roll, but there's this one drill where basically you fly from goal post to opposite goal post back and forth in free play. And I think this drill is super useful. I first heard about this drill in a car control tutorial from the guide maker Thanovic. But what I think this drill might be even better for than car control is actually training goal line defense. I'm sorry for saying the word defense. Don't click off. 
I promise this can also help you look cooler in your ranked games. So there's this clip that I saw on my YouTube shorts last week, I think it was, where Appjack was defending Zen on the goal line. And if you haven't seen this clip, I'll think it was Zen. Buck, help me, put it on screen. The thing that stands out in this clip is Appjack's insane ability to recover and maintain boost while saving shot after shot on his goal line. As much as I'd wish to be as fast as him, average players like you and me can learn a little bit from this by simply going into free play and once again, flying from goal to goal. If you're like me and have ever been trying to like rotate back to your net and you accidentally drive up your back wall and go flying across the net, this is the drill for you. <laughs> flying from net to net is gonna help you understand how wide the goal is as well as time your air roll to make sure you can transition into and out of the net. Add this to your free play warmup routine and your recoveries, specifically on defense, or after you overcommit on offense are gonna be three times as quick. Tip number nine, he who shall not be named. I'm not gonna name this tip because I think it scares people below Grand Champ and people get very defensive when I say it. So Buck, just help me put it on screen, but I'll just let you read. I'm not gonna be your parent and lecture you about how you need to use Boost better. But a quick tip that I'm gonna give you that will make an impact in your game immediately if you actually try this is pay attention to your boost tank when you're off the ball and keep it above 70. If you've ever been playing ranked and you've ever wondered why you're so much better in free play, this might be it. The problem a lot of players have below GC is not that they don't know mechanics, but simply they don't keep enough boost in the tank to actually do it in game. Most high level mechanics, especially long aerial plays, so we're talking air dribbles, flip reset, ceiling shots, require 70 plus boost to pull off. That last 30 in the tank is usually the deciding factor between scoring and flopping. So keep your boost above 70, ideally closer to 90 or 100, that way, when it's your turn to make a play, you have enough boost to go for a fancy aerial play or whatever you want. Don't be the guy going for flip resets with 50 boost. You're not him. Number 10, challenge first on defense. I can't tell you how many times this has happened on my road to SSL, but if you are the first person in a ranked lobby and you have a teammate defending behind you on the goal line, and let's say the opponent has the ball attacking midair, you have to challenge as first map. It doesn't matter if it's a full challenge or a drive challenge or even a fake challenge, but if you're first to the ball and you're being attacked on with a teammate behind, you've got to pressure their first man. Sitting and waiting for the perfect moment to challenge when you have a teammate behind you costs you twice as much than just challenging or making it look like you're going to challenge. That way you force a move from the opponent. The worst thing that can possibly happen in 2v2 or 3v3 defense is when your entire team is trying to save a ball together on the goal line. This is what causes double or triple commits. So if you're first, challenge the ball. Number 11, hold jump on takeoff. The amount of people that are fast aerialing wrong below Grand Champ is unacceptable. And I'm not gonna stop including this in my tips videos until players listen. If you didn't know, holding jump actually extends your height and your second jump timer. Yes, that's right. The longer you hold your first jump, the longer you'll have to use your second one. So if you're currently fast aerialing and you just mash the joystick to jump fast and get in the air, you're doing it wrong. Hold the jump to max out your first jump timer before you use your second neutral jump, like we talked about earlier, to get the fastest fast aerials. If you do this right, you will dust 95% of players below champ. Seriously, go try this in your ranked games right now. Number 12, watch people better than you. I'm not just going to go tell you to watch pro replays to get better because I don't actually think that's the best way. In my opinion, the best players to study are not the best players, but players who are slightly better than you. If you want to improve, watching Zen is not a good use of your time. If you're plat, you would be much better off watching diamond or ideally champ level gameplay. That way you can see what people are doing who are just a couple steps ahead of you rather than lifetimes ahead of you. This is not an insult to you. It is an insult to all of us 
who are not zen. Watch pro gameplay for fun, but if you want to get better the fastest, go annoy your friend who's one or two ranks higher and make them send you one of their ranked replays on Discord. If you do this like once every two or three months. I'm not telling you to do this every time you play Rocket League. If you've never done this, just take a look at a replay once and you can have enough stuff to work on for a full year, depending on your rank. Study high level gameplay. Lastly, unlucky tip number 13, use voice comms. I know I'm asking a lot here. Most of us playing Rocket League aren't exactly smooth with human interaction and socializing. But I promise you, if you can find a way to team up with somebody who has voice comms, not only will you play faster, but you're just going to straight up rank up. Now, granted, below plat, voice comms doesn't have much of an impact because let's face it, even if your plat teammate tells you what they're doing, are they going to do it? It's kind of a coin flip. I mean, put another way, if I'm a betting man, right? And my plat teammate tells me they're centering the ball and I have to make a bet whether or not it's coming. Gun to my head, life on the line. I'm betting that he's not going to make the center. Love all my plat viewers, but my money's on. He's missing or getting dunked and center's not coming. But jokes aside, simply being able to tell your teammate where you're going to be or where the ball is going to be is a massive edge for the majority of you watching that are ranked diamond plus. If you're like me and you have trouble finding teammates who are higher ranked, I actually started Rocket League's largest free training discord just so you can find people at your rank and it's completely free so i'll have that first link down below there are loads of people free training resources and tips that i don't put in these videos because once again if i say certain tips people will click off and the sad part is a lot of these tips are useful so like i have to save them for the end of this video but like play 1v1 hit open nets stop training air dribbles in free play and ah the plot's already left all right thanks for watching that's my time. I'll see you in the next one. Later, guys. Okay. Thanks for watching. <laughs> no, I, I hate plats for real. I hate you.